Have you ever woken up from a dream and thought, what was that all about? One night you're flying over mountains, the next you're late to an exam you didn't even study for. Dreams are wild, sometimes beautiful, sometimes terrifying, and always mysterious. But the big question is, why do we dream at all? Today, we're diving into the science, the psychology, and even the philosophy of dreaming. And by the end, you might see those nightly movies in your mind in a completely different way. Every single person dreams, even if you don't remember them. You dream multiple times every night, mostly during REM sleep. But here's the kicker. Scientists don't fully agree on why we dream. We know what happens in the brain, but the reason? That's still up for debate. For centuries, we've looked at dreams for divine messages, prophecies, or a window into our hidden desires. But modern science is peeling back the curtain, offering theories that are just as fascinating as any ancient myth. So, let's explore the leading explanations for this universal human experience. Chapter 1. The Memory Consolidation Hypothesis One of the most popular and evidence-backed ideas is that dreams are your brain's way of filing memories. Think of your mind as a giant, slightly disorganized hard drive. Every single day, you're dumping countless files into it. That awkward conversation with your boss, the name of a new song you liked, the stress of a deadline, even those TikToks you didn't want to watch, but did anyway. It's a lot of data. At night, during sleep, your brain gets to work sorting it all out. What's important enough to keep? What can be moved to the trash? Dreams might just be a byproduct of this transfer. This explains why you might dream about a subject. You, restudying intensely for a test your brain, is literally working overnight to cement that information. The dream might not be a literal replay. Instead, it mixes old memories with new ones, creating those bizarre scenarios we know and love. Chapter 2. The Threat Simulation Theory Secondly, a theory that speaks to our primal instincts. Have you ever noticed how many dreams are, well, stressful? You're being chased, you're falling, you're unprepared for a big presentation. It's not always pleasant. The Threat Simulation Theory, proposed by philosopher Auntie Revan Suo, suggests this isn't a bug, it's a feature. <coughs> this theory argues that dreaming evolved as a defense mechanism, a virtual reality simulator for practicing our fight-to-flight responses. Think about it from an evolutionary perspective. For our ancestors, the world was a dangerous place. Predators, rival tribes, natural disasters threats were everywhere. A brain that could safely rehearse escape strategies or confrontational scenarios without any real-world risk would provide a massive survival advantage. So, when you dream that you're running from a shadowy figure, your brain is essentially running a drill. It's activating the same fear and stress responses you'd have in real life. It's letting you practice your reaction in a safe, simulated environment. The theory suggests that this is why anxiety-provoking dreams are so common. They're the brain's three-tooth-a-week training program, keeping your survival skills sharp. Chapter 3. The Emotional Regulation Theory But what about the feelings? Streams aren't just about events. They are drenched in emotion. Sometimes you wake up with a lingering sense of joy or a profound sadness that sticks with you for hours. This leads us to another powerful idea. Dreams are your emotional playground. The emotional regulation theory suggests that dreaming helps us process and cope with powerful feelings, especially negative ones. In the words of neuroscientist Matthew Walker, REM sleep is like overnight therapy. It takes the sharp, painful edges off difficult emotional experiences. Here's how it might work. During REM sleep, your brain reprocesses emotional memories. Cause so in a state where stress-related neurochemicals are suppressed. This allows you to relive an emotional event without the full-blown stress response. It's like watching a scary movie for the second time. You know what's going to happen, so you can analyze it with a bit more distance. By doing this night after night, your brain helps you integrate difficult experiences, reducing their emotional charge. 
this could explain why, after a good night's sleep, a problem that seemed insurmountable the day before suddenly feels more manageable. Your brain has been working behind the scenes, de-escalating your emotional response and helping you find peace. Chapter 4. The Continual Activation Theory Okay, let's get a bit more physiological. What if dreams aren't really for anything? What if they're just a byproduct of our brains staying active? This is the core of the continual activation theory. This model proposes that the brain needs to stay constantly active to maintain its complex neural pathways. During the day, it gets plenty of stimulation from the outside world. According to this theory, one part of the brain starts to process by sending random electrical signals or activations up to another part of the brain. The receiver then does its best to interpret these random signals. Okay, it's like being given a random assortment of pictures and words and being told to create a story. The brain weaves these nonsensical signals into a narrative, drawing on recent memories, deep-seated fears, and latent desires to fill in the gaps. So that dream where your teeth fall out while you're riding a unicycle on the moon? It might not be a deep symbolic message. It could just be your brain trying to make a coherent story out of a bunch of random neural firings. It's less about meaning and more about a biological process of self-maintenance. Chapter 5. The Creative Problem Solving it's theory. If you ever heard the phrase, sleep on it, turns out, that's incredibly sound advice. Many famous discoveries and creative breakthroughs have reportedly come from dreams. Paul McCartney famously said the melody for yesterday came to him in a dream. The structure of the benzene ring was revealed to a chemist in a dream of a snake biting its own tail. This leads to the theory that dreams are a sandbox for creativity and problem solving. When we're awake, our thinking is often linear and logical, constrained by rules and preconceptions. But in the dream state, the prefrontal cortex, the part of our brain responsible for rational thought, is less active. This allows our minds to make connections we would never make in our waking life. The brain freely associates ideas, memories, and concepts in novel and bizarre ways. This hyper-associative state can lead to aha it's moments and innovative solutions to problems that have been stumping us. Your dream might be taking a problem you're refacing at work and combining it with a memory from childhood and an image from a movie you saw last week creating a strange new perspective that unlocks a solution. It's your brain thinking outside the box way, way outside the box. So, the purpose of dreaming is still one of neuroscience's greatest unsolved mysteries. The truth is likely not one single theory, but a combination of several. Dreams help you remember stuff, manage feelings, and face fears. They really show just how amazing and complex our brains are. Dreams are personal, weird, and super important to who we are. So the next time you wake up from a particularly vivid dream, instead of just thinking, what was that about? Maybe ask yourself, what was my brain trying to do for me? The answer might be more incredible than the dream itself. Join the magic today and make sure to like and subscribe to Fairy Friends.